Storytelling, 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 storytelling. I bet you hear these words a lot these days. There's books about storytelling, workshops about storytelling, and then people like me talking about storytelling non-stop. But why? Why is storytelling so important? I remember asking this question myself when my clients started requesting storytelling training from me. The requests I got were kind of strange. It would be groups of people like engineers who just wanted to improve their monthly reports. I wondered why do they need to turn their monthly reports into stories? Surely that's overcomplicating things. Well, eventually I realized what people really meant by the term storytelling. It's not just about telling stories, it's ultimately about making meaning. And we can learn pretty much everything there is to know about making meaning just by looking at how stories work. Stories are great at many things. In particular, they're great at making things easy to understand, changing people's minds, and even inspiring people to action. And if we look at the techniques stories use to make things easy to understand, change people's minds, and inspire action, we can take those techniques out of stories and use them independently. This way, we can bring more meaning to our everyday communication. We can become better at making small talk. People will find us more interesting. We'll find it easier to influence people, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a few practical tips on how to improve storytelling. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie and I work as a coach and trainer and my channel is all about leadership tips for influencing, communicating and boosting productivity. If you find this video useful, I spend many hours creating these videos, so if you could give me a like and subscribe, that would really make my day. Thank you. Notice change. This is the simplest and most effective habit you can develop to improve your storytelling skills. Because every story is about change. A story is never about life as per usual. Something happens and someone has to respond to that change. And it just so happens that every day we experience lots of changes. Our car breaks down, we get locked out of our apartment, we start a new job, and so on. Every time we experience a change, there's a story in there. For example, as I record this video, I'm actually living through the Shanghai lockdown. There are a lot of changes happening every single day. We've been locked in our apartments for a month. We've had to ration our food. We've been really worried about being forcibly separated from our kids and sent to quarantine camps. There's a lot of stories that are coming out of this experience that I'll be telling for the rest of my life. When you pay a bit more attention to the changes that happen in your life, you start to remember them. You can start to store them in your memory, in your story pool. Your story pool is a big memory bank of stories. The more times you notice change, the more stories you can save in your story pool. And then the next time you're chatting with a friend, or giving an important presentation, or trying to make an important point, you can use one of those stories from your story pool. The first time you tell a story won't be the best time. And that's completely normal. You've got to try it out for the first time to find what works and what doesn't work. And then you can improve it for next time. Over time, with practice and refinement, your stories get better and better, and your storytelling abilities naturally develop from there. And that natural development will all have started from that one simple habit of just noticing change. So think about the changes that have happened to you in the last week, and what stories you can find from there. And start to think of the changes that will happen to you in the coming days, and start looking out for them. So you've started noticing change. You're building a story pool and you've started telling those new stories for the first time. Remember that first time is never the best time. You need to refine your stories based on the reactions you get from your audience. Notice what grabs their attention, what gets them intrigued, what they laugh at and what they cry at and refine from there. And to refine, remember these three words, relate, challenge, resolve. Relate, challenge, resolve is the basic structure of any story. It is also the framework I cover in my book, The Story Habit, How Leaders Shape Stories That Drive Action. 
Relate means that the story must be about someone in some situation the audience can relate to. The more of themselves they can see in the story's character, the more they will relate. And the more similar the situation in the story is to situations they've experienced in real life, the more easily they will relate. After the audience start relating to the character and the situation of the story, we present a challenge. This is the part of the story where we show a change. The world changes, bad things happen, and the character faces a challenge. If the audience relates strongly to the character, then when the challenge comes, the audience will feel the pain of this challenge and want to see it through to the end. Finally, resolve. There should be a resolution. The character finds a way of overcoming the challenge. And there is a lesson for the audience to take from this story. It's this resolve part of the story that is most likely to inspire your audience to take action. Relate, challenge, resolve. As you think about how to refine your story, think about how you can better relate to the audience, how you can make the pain of the challenge stand out, and how you can help the audience learn from the resolution. If you'd like to learn more about Relate, Challenge, Resolve, you can download your free Story Habit Story Guide using the link in the description below. You can also check out my other video on the magical science and art of storytelling, where I cover this structure in a lot more depth. One final habit for becoming a better storyteller is, ironically, to shut up. Some of the best storytellers I know are also some of the best listeners I know. Because they know that a story is never about the storyteller. It's always about the audience. Of the Relate, Challenge, Resolve framework I talked about just now, the relate part is the most fundamental. If your story doesn't relate to your audience, they will switch off from it. To relate to your audience, you need to know what matters to them, what they believe in, what they care about, what they've experienced in life, and so on. And what's the best way of learning about your audience? It's by shutting up and listening to them. If there are important stakeholders that you work with frequently, stakeholders like customers, partners, leaders, and so on, take your time to listen to them. Learn what matters to them, what they believe in, what they care about, and what they've experienced in life. And then consider what stories you have that will relate to them the most. And even as you are telling a story, Keep paying attention to your audience. Notice how their facial expressions change. Notice where their eyes look. Notice if they nod their heads, smile, wipe tears away, and so on. These are all signs about how well your story is relating to them and what you can do to relate better. The best storytellers relate. Remember, your story is not about you, it's about them. So in summary, we looked at several tips. Firstly, Notice change. This is the simplest and most effective way of naturally developing your storytelling ability. Notice changes that happen in everyday life. Build a story pool and start practicing those stories. Secondly, refine your stories. The first time you tell a story is never the best time. Notice what works and what doesn't work and use the relate, challenge, resolve structure to improve your stories. Thirdly, shut up. <laughs> Of the relate, challenge, resolve structure, relate is the most fundamental part. Because your story is not about you, it's ultimately about them. So listen more and focus more on relating to your audience. Which of these tips did you find most helpful? And what other tips do you have for improving your storytelling skills? Share in the comments below. And if you'd like to learn more, then download your free Story Habit Story Guide using the link in the description below. You might also be interested in checking out my book, The Story Habit, How Leaders Shape Stories That Drive Action. If you found this video useful, a like and subscribe would help me a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.